So yeah, I didn't upload for a week. Big whoop. Wanna fight about it? So, hey everybody, um, I'm still here, I, uh, I took last week off, um, and I didn't upload anything, because I was a little burnt out. The first week of July was pretty busy, um, first off, I, uh, went to Pride, again, and, um, that was kind of crazy. Um, I went to New York Pride, and it was... Um, a lot bigger than Philly was. And, um, I had a great time, um, but, uh, it was exhausting. And I needed a couple days to recover. But I really enjoyed myself. I went with my brother and... Um, I met my uncle who lives in New York that I don't usually see very often. Um, and it was actually the first time he actually saw me since I started transitioning. Um, so it was, it was really great. I also finally met uh, Maya, which was very nice. And actually, if you head over to her channel, she has a whole travel vlog about New York Pride. It's pretty great. Hello, how are you? Shannon McDill. Is that you got it, one shot. woman herself. I hope I'm not outing you. No, you're not. I love New York City Pride. I've run into like a few fans and that like never happens to me. Maybe one day I'll be there too. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, I'm a fan of yours, okay, Shannon. Cool. Have a great Pride. Right. So I, I needed some time to recover after that. Um, but I also, um, in the past couple weeks, started a new job. So that's been eating up a little bit of my time. It's good. It's a fun job. But, um, that took a little bit of precedent. And then it was the 4th of July, and I had a bunch of family time that I didn't necessarily want to spend filming. And you know, if I'm gonna be perfectly honest, it's, that's a little bit of a weird week. This was really the first time um, that I've had that experience. I haven't been to Pride before. And, um, Allowing myself to kind of get immersed in the experience of just celebrating everything LGBT um, and then switching over into that's just done now and um, the world very much goes from, um, let's see, baby you were born this way to AMERICA! FUCK YEAH! <clears throat> oh, holy shit, I can't do that anymore. It's a little bit of a head turner. And... It's... It's a weird experience in so much that... A lot of what my mental energy was focusing on during Pride was... Besides just... Celebrating... The community and... Um, everything we've achieved, also acknowledging and really focusing on what we have left to do. And then to just try to make the mental switch to celebrating how great America is, was actually kind of difficult this year. Um, which is weird for me because I absolutely adore the 4th of July. It's one of my favorite holidays. Um, and I love America. But, at the same time, it's hard to just turn on the patriotism filter when you've been focusing so much on how your country is failing you. So that was kind of difficult. I was going to do this video last week, but I honestly just didn't have the mental energy for it. And to boot, I mean, if we're going to follow up on my last video, um, I'd still kind of plateaued. And so, um, I was really discouraged last week as well, and, you know, 
you're not really feeling inspired to talk about your weight loss in videos about your weight loss, and you're also kind of overwhelmed with life and just society, sometimes you just need a break. So I'm still here. But I've been giving a lot of thought to that aspect of where we are right now. I mean, it, I think it's pretty obvious how much of a uh, bleeding heart liberal I am. So obviously, I watched the debates. And it was heartening that a lot of the discussion was very much focused on the community. Now, how much of that is calculated rhetoric versus um, sincere beliefs and policy positions? I don't know. But the fact that it is a part of the conversation that um, the Democratic candidates felt needed to be addressed is a good thing. Because while we were plastering everything with rainbows and throwing confetti and glitter everywhere, and corporations making millions of dollars selling Pride-themed merchandise um, because they're being supportive. Um, and you know, there's a lot of fake um, pride support that crops up in June. Um, and then within a couple days, that same faux patriotism sprouts up and, you know, the last week in June, you know, you walk into a store and there had been rainbows everywhere, now there's just American flags and it's kind of like any other holiday. Like, you know, like October 31st, maybe you might find some Halloween stuff, but there's probably th Thanksgiving and more likely Christmas stuff out. Um, and there's just this very distinct sense of, well, now we're moving on. While that's easy for everyone else to do, for the rest of us in the community, that's every day. Pride is every day. That is our lives. It's not about um, the party. It's about the fight for equality. And to go through the month of June um, and having still so many of my sisters get killed. To have continued outbreaks of anti-LGBT violence um, during the month that we're supposed to be celebrating and then having that national sense of going beyond that because we've done our time focusing on you gays. Um, it's it's upsetting, but it's also it can take the wind out of your sails when you want to have those feelings of rah rah go America. Um, and it's not to say I didn't have a good Fourth of July. I did. I spent time with my family, and it was wonderful. It was lovely. But it's difficult to be at a point when you see the cracks in the facade. Um, it's like, you know, a lot of kids think that their parents are wonderful and perfect, and then when they grow up they see how flawed they actually are. Um, and it's heartbreaking to some extent to see a lot of people in the country um, trying to move the national character from one of equality and freedom, whether that was actualized or not, to being one of um, blind nationalism and hatred of foreigners and people who are different in any way. It's overwhelming. And I want my country to do better. I want America to live up to those ideas that we espouse. And whether we have in the past or not, we can. And it's very difficult to see 
a lot of people being so comfortable just going, you know, we don't even need to espouse that anymore. You know, we're not even going to put up the pretense of being the, the, the country that's the good guy in the room. So, I think it's beholden on all of us to pay attention to what's going on. I would love nothing more than to go back to when I was a kid um, watching fireworks and holding star-spangled balloons and waving flags and um, feeling confident in the pure truth that um, everything in my country is wonderful. Um, but it's not. The one thing that I think we all need to do is balance that kind of optimism with an acknowledgement of the reality of our current situations. Because it's, it's very easy to slip into nihilism. It's very easy to feel despondent and just give up and go, what's the point? The whole thing's broken. There's nothing we can do and there's no fixing it. Everything sucks. It's horrible. Just give up. It's, that's a tempting thing. Just screw it. What's the point? But I've thrown out this quote before that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Some people may think that's naive, but I believe that it's true. But it doesn't bend on its own. So, as we move on through the summer and we are getting ready to send our kids back to school and getting ready for fall and Christmas and another year coming around. Pay attention to what's going on. Go educate yourself. Don't sit there and just watch the cable news networks. And I don't care what side of the political spectrum you're on. Go watch everything. Trust me, sometimes watching Fox makes you want to throw up. Sometimes it's just hilarious. But you can't move people on the other side if you don't know where they're at. And as the 2020 political season really starts ramping up, be engaged. Talk to friends. Talk to people online. Reach out to candidates and their campaigns. And as a lot of you know, last year I worked on um, a campaign for one of the local congressman in New Jersey and we successfully flipped his seat. So if you want to make any kind of change in our country, if you want to make a change at the top, you also have to focus on making changes further down the ballot. So get involved in what's going on locally, talk to people in your community, help run for something if you think you can make a change. Because it's not just about waiting for things to get better. As much as I love that phrase that we toss around in our community, it does get better but not on its own. And we have to work to make that happen. So I'm back and so while I'm busting my ass to lose weight, I'm going to figure out what I can do to help move things along as well because we've got a lot going against us right now and I know that we can do better. So get your shit together America and um, I'll see you around. <laughs>